Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Um, I have got my split cup out. I did a split cup recently. I did an Easter pour with some really pretty colours. The, the um, ring pour with the split cup came out so bright and colourful, felt so inspired. So I'm going to mix up a whole load of new colours, quite strong colours, quite contrasting colours, have a slightly thicker mixture and then use a, the, the split cup to pour them out in, into a ring. Um, the advantage of using this just over an an open cup um, is that the colours stay really really separate until they hit the canvas so actually you can end up with a result of really contrasting colours right next to each other without muddying so I'm a big fan of my split cup um, so let me show you the colours I'm going to use really really pretty colours so I've got primary cyan which is a really bright blue by Amsterdam I've got light rose I've got permanent red violet I've got sky blue light I have ultramarine violet and quinacridone rose, all by Amsterdam. Two pebio colours, so there's the iridescent blue green, the iridescent green yellow, so there'll be a bit of sparkle, a bit of shimmer in the pour, and then some white. My plan is to put just a little bit of white in between the layers. So where's, where's my split cup gone? So I will fill each chamber half full put a little dash of white and then put another colour on top. So I just want to know how what that would look like at, oh, as it comes out onto the canvas. So the white's just going to separate the colours. So slight change of plan, plan. I'm now going to use my four chamber split cup. Because I've got eight colours, I just felt that, that would be, it would be better to have um, four chambers for the eight colours instead of the five. So first of all, I'm thinking of doing half in one colour than half in another. The other option is to actually do some three. I'm not really sure. Um, so the colours I put in very first, they're going to be at the bottom of the cup. They're the colours that are going to come out last. So I want my favourite colours at the bottom because then they're going to be in the centre of the, uh, the pour. And my four favourites are these colours here. So separating the pink, separating the iridescence, I'm going to put a little bit of each colour in, in the bottom. Um, now, just to show you the consistency, it's mixed with PVA glue and water pouring medium. So for each, each tub here, I mix 50 grams of pouring medium, 25 grams of paint, so two to one. And then I've added about five grams of water to each, more to the iridescence. So it's kind of two to one to a fifth. Um, and that just gives... It's runny, it pours really, it flows really well, but it does leave a slight trace. So there is a bit of thickness there. So this is much thicker than when I've done it before with um, more of the Dutch pour consistency. So I'm still a little bit undecided on how to put the white in. So I think I actually, I probably only did a quarter at the bottom there. I'm just gonna pour some in. And it doesn't even have to be the same amount at this point. Now I have paid absolutely no attention to what colours are transparent and which colours are opaque. So in some ways that's a bit of a mistake because the transparent ones will, will get a bit lost. But on the other hand, it's so you can't, just can't control a lot of things with fluid art. So what's the point in worrying about it? Um, right, I'm going to do a drizzle of white. So I'm just sort of layering it over the top of that, the colour that's, that's in there at the moment. So I've got a 50 centimetre canvas here. So I'm going to ring pour into the centre um, and I will probably end up twisting around a little bit just to create some different effects. So if I just get the paint towards the edge.
Wow, those colours are fab. There are so many lines. Um, definitely, definitely need a flow extender, otherwise I'm going to lose a lot of this. So I think I'm just simply going to pour down some of the colours that I've got left. So the, it just means that the canvas is then wet so that the, the design can flow really nicely over the canvas. If a canvas is dry and you pour the paint over it, it will stick and it will the friction will cause the cut the design just to roll over itself. So you lose a lot of the details. If it was a smaller canvas, I wouldn't worry so much. But because it's such a big canvas, this paint has got to stretch a long way. So I'd rather it stretch with the design intact. this looks really strange at the moment but if you can imagine that all of this around the edge is not going to show it's going to be tipped off so it's going to stretch out that pattern in the middle now there's lots of cells on lots of bubbles unfortunately and that will be because I have just mixed these paints so really what I should have done is mix the paints and walked away but it was a bit too impatient I just wanted to get pouring so sometimes the bubbles can look really pretty because they can just look like little cells so um, they might they might add to this but they might not so I'm just going to start tilting this out so I want to keep the design on the canvas to start with so I'm just going to stretch this out in all directions now I'm hoping you can see that that puddle that the ring pour is pushing against the flow extender so you can see that the edge colors aren't rolling over themselves at the moment they're just pushing on that flow extender so the whole puddle stays intact it's literally just stretching out at the moment So I've stretched that out really pretty well now. So it's covering most of the court, most of the canvas apart from the corners. I'm just going to give it another torch. So you can see in the centre there where I had um, a little blob of paint, a little lump in there. It's distorted the pattern. So it's best to try and get the, the blobs out before you finish, before you finish your final tilt, because I can work on that if I'm not happy with it. Right, so now I just need to slowly but surely start going off over the edges so that my puddle then covers the canvas. Really pleased because you can still see that flow extender around the edge there. So that has actually worked really well. Just look at the crazy colours. I am so happy. I've had a couple of issues with it, which I'll explain. Um, but the overall effect, the overall result, I am loving because you've got, you haven't got muddying. You've got every single colour. You have got literally hundreds and hundreds of beautiful, beautiful lines. Um, 
just so bright, so vivid. It will darken a little bit as it dries. Um, I'm actually loving all the cells. So these were just literally the air bubbles that I burst. Um, so one problem, I'm not quite as keen on the air bubbles up in this corner, and that's because they're stretched, they're elongated. So I had thought about tipping that off, but I love this composition because you've got the dark blue that comes around here, then the dark blue here, and then the dark blue around here. You've got the pinky colour here and the pinky colour all the way up around there. So I actually think if I tipped some of this off, it wouldn't work. I'm really happy with this composition. Slightly off centre, centre, but you've got the really lovely little corners. Now, the problem I had was here. Do you remember I had that really big lump of paint? The whole pattern skewed right up here and it looked really odd. So I've just very gently pulled a little palette knife through. Now, if you look carefully, you can see what I've done. But actually, if you stand back, I think the whole thing flows a bit more. So it still sticks up slightly more there, but not like it did before. So I just think it works so much better. Um, these colours are fab. Look at that pink and blue. And then it just fades into the green. Now you can see little tiny bits of the white, but not much. So I actually think I got the white right. If I hadn't have added the white, it might have been a bit brighter. You've got a bit of pastelliness around here. So I think the white has just, just not dulled it, but just maybe made it slightly more pastely. But actually, as this dries, it will go darker. So I actually think that will work really well. So really happy, really excited for this to, to see this dry now. So it's now dry, and what really, really strikes me is the depth in it. Um, you've got this sort of off, this odd bit here, so it's not completely round, but it gives such depth. It really looks to me like this bit is raised above, so this bit is in the background. Um, and the centre, really, it's a really neat centre. To me, it just looks like it's coming out towards me. Um, it's dried beautifully, really pretty cells, really pretty lines, really pretty colours really happy with it the consistency of the paint was spot on because this is totally smooth it's lovely if you go too thick with the paint often you get ridges um where that you where the different consistencies the different paints meet but there aren't any it's just totally totally smooth um, and then the best bit if i show you in the light it comes alive because you can see that iridescent green in the center it's just beautiful. It's really shiny, really iridescent. So this isn't varnished at the moment. This is just as is. And the shine just comes from the pouring medium. So from the PVA glue in the pouring medium. So you can see how smooth the canvas is. Because you can still see a little bit of the texture from the canvas underneath. So it shows that it's a reasonably thin mix, but it was thick enough to hold. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think. Um, please do hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Great. Take care, everyone. Bye.